So good afternoon, everyone. I'm glad you could join us today in this roundtable discussions of ITS Finland and ITS Factory public-private networks to develop intelligent transport systems. My name is Jukka Laitinen. I'm the chairman of ITS Factory and technology manager for Technical Research Center of Finland, VTT, where my main area is autonomous systems for transport and logistics. Together with me today are jolly good fellow Marko Forsblom, CEO of ITS Finland, and great mind, great speaker Pekka Eloranta, board member of ITS Factory and senior consultant at Sidowise. At first, Marko will tell you a bit more about ITS Finland and then presentation followed by Pekka about ITS Factory. Already during these presentations, you can add your questions to us to the chat window and we will then go through those in our discussions. Don't be surprised, we might even ask something from you, although you might not be able to answer other way than the chat window. But perhaps it will give you some food for thoughts. Our focus today is the strengths of public-private networks and how those will work. In the end, we will spare at least some 20 minutes for free discussions, and I hope you are active there behind your own screens. But let's get started. Marco, the screen is yours. Okay, thank you, Jukka, and welcome also on my behalf. Now I share screen, I have some slides to show what kind of operations we have in ITS Finland. And please let me know if you don't see my slides. We can see them. Okay, thank you. So I'm Marko Forsblom, uh, CEO of ITS Finland. I have now been in ITS Finland for five years about, and before that I worked in the Ministry of Transport and Communications, also about five years, and before that about 20 years in all kinds of consulting uh, companies in, uh, in Finland. And uh, my presentation is about uh, our daily work in ITS Finland. Uh, some of the some background of our association and uh, uh, and our network some information about our network. But mainly, I try to concentrate those issues we are working with uh, on daily basis. Our goal is to become a number one network for smart and sustainable future of mobility in Finland. And I think that together with ITS Factory, we, we have managed quite well uh, so far. Uh, here are some uh, main points. Uh, I could say that our main purpose is to kind of turning worldwide challenges and transportation sector to opportunities for smart and sustainable growth export in this industry. Uh, I think that uh, those uh, challenges we have in transportation system is quite common worldwide and at the same time uh, as we in transportation sector we those as a challenges we can also kind of see those as opportunities for for Finnish know-how uh, in this field uh, our vision uh, is uh, to be smarter and more sustainable and user centric in transportation system and our mission is uh, at the same time we are kind of uh, uh, seeing this uh, transportation policy uh, goals. So we are trying to achieve those uh, business goals in Finland uh, to create new companies, create new innovations, 
create new jobs uh, for for Finnish and uh, so on. At the moment, there are about 110 organizations in our association, and the organization comes from public sector, municipalities, cities, uh, and business and academia. Uh, biggest companies are listed companies, and the smallest one are startups and uh, middle-sized companies. Uh, we are established 2006, and uh, we are also a member of ITS National's network. This is we, how we see our transport system nowadays. So we kind of uh, see it through layers that uh, uh, include uh, our basic infrastructure, uh, telecommunication, and uh, energy infrastructure, intelligent traffic infrastructure, uh, all kinds of uh, cloud services, data services, and uh, uh, those uh, actual mobility services. And you can call this intelligent when you can collect data from each of, uh, each of these layers. You can combine the data, analyze it, and to use as a basis or raw material to all kinds of, uh, kind of services and technologies. Connect and data and connectivity are the main issues here. And this is just for, you know, to see what kind of uh, companies, what kind of stakeholders we have in each layers. And this kind of lays, Place the background for those uh, business uh, business uh, goals we have. We have very good companies, very good know-how in all those layers I just mentioned. Um, I guess Finland, as I said, is a part of uh, a European network of. Uh, uh, national ITS association. Nowadays, uh, each EU country have similar association, uh, and we have quite a lot of cooperation. Not with all of them. I, we know, of course, we have some kind of cooperation with all of those, but uh, to mention some, of course, our Nordic, uh, Nordic neighbors and Estonia, they are more, most active, and also UK, Austria, Netherlands, Germany. Uh, they are uh, all quite active in this field, and we are uh, almost weekly basis uh, have some kind of uh, discussions with those. At, mom at the moment, we are, for example, uh, going planning a virtual delegation uh, to be a guest for ITS UK, and we are doing that uh, together with ITS Estonia. Here are some uh, main areas what we are doing, influencing networking and uh, communications. I'm not going to uh, read those uh, through, but uh, maybe you get this material afterwards so you can take a closer look what we are doing with those fields. But uh, here are some uh, examples, uh, some examples of act action in our network. First, influencing a handsome young man there in the House of Estates. Uh, House of Estates is the major building in Finland with the House of Parliament. Uh, where all the big decisions are made in Finland. Uh, before COVID, uh, we visited our House of Parliament about 10 to 15 times uh, a year uh, as an uh, expert, uh, invited expert in this field. Uh, and uh, also we take part of all kinds of activities in Finland, uh, for example, growth path for startup companies. We have been organizing together with different stakeholders, uh, 
now five years in a row, uh, future of transportation growth path. Uh, there is usually about 100 to 120 startups in this field. And uh, the picture is from uh, uh, the uh, great happening uh, after this competition. So uh, that is one uh, way to influence how we can kind of uh, have new startups in this field. And all kind of networking, this is from TRA, from Wien, if I remember it right. And uh, we have quite a lot of all kind of uh, activities uh, globally. This is from Eindhoven, I think, ideas. European Congress, there is uh, Danny Jones from Weisala Pitching. We had this. Uh, stand together with ITS Estonia and uh, our last ITS World Congress uh, was in uh, Singapore 2019 last year it was supposed to be uh, ought to be in uh, Los Angeles but it was cancelled because of COVID. Uh, we had uh, in uh, uh, in Singapore, Nordic Plus Pavilion, that means Nordic countries plus uh, Estonia. And of course, uh, we went, went there to learn from each other's benchmark, all kind of activities, but uh, most of all, uh, see old friends and get new ones. And uh, networking is always uh, in a quite uh, big team in all those ITS World Congresses. And this is also from ITS World Congress in Singapore. There we are in Raffles, have Singapore slings all together. Uh, we, all, we, I could say that we visit every year in ITS World Congress, there is a, uh, Usually about 100, 150 persons from Finland. I guess in uh, Copenhagen, there was about 350 people from Finland. So we are quite active in that field. And uh, not uh, we visit also other, other mm -hmm. events, not only ITS congresses. This is from uh, Mobile World Congress uh, from Barcelona, and uh, this is uh, one event that we are planning to visit also in future. We were supposed to be there also last time, but because of COVID, it was also cancelled. So this is uh, this hasn't been the easiest uh, times for networking. So last year, but hopefully we see some green lights. And of course, our own networking uh, events, we had those four to five different kinds of seminars and uh, uh, networking uh, events. Uh, and uh, we use uh, this kind of um, expression that we are kind of ITS family here in Finland and nowadays I have heard that uh, other ITS association Nordics uh, call us all as ITS Nordic family. So uh, this is something that kind of tells the story about this uh, community and uh, you could even call these uh, guys not only your uh, friends from, from work, but also on, uh, on free time. And communication is one, uh, one very important aspect. And uh, we have, of course, our own uh, sites but, and also Future Mobility Finland. FutureMobilityFinland.fi, those are only in English and uh, we have kind of uh, planned those uh, together with our ministries, uh, agencies, cities and companies and 
you can find all kinds of uh, case stories, our events also, those uh, ecosystem players, uh, there are at the moment uh, 100 companies that are introduced and you can uh, find uh, more info and contact information and so on. Do I have some time left? Maybe some. I guess so, so just continue, Marco. Yes, okay. And uh, just for a reminder, we will be at this uh, World Congress in Hamburg also with this Nordic Plus Pavilion and welcome to visit us also there. And uh, one, uh, this is only one example, but this is our most important uh, project. Uh, this is National Transport Sector Growth Program. Uh, it includes uh, uh, five different ministries, six uh, biggest cities in Finland, Business Finland, VTT, Citra, our uh, independence fund, uh, uh, all our major agencies and a lot of lot of companies also. And there is this main philosophy that uh, we are kind of uh, promoting systemic uh, kind of uh, renewal of our of our. Uh, ecosystem that uh, at the same time we are like I told you in the beginning at the same time we are kind of uh, solving those transport policy uh, challenges and uh, those uh, goals we are same times trying to develop that kind of know-how that has uh, has uh, business opportunities both here in Finland and also uh, approach. We are trying to, or, or we are aiming to be one of the uh, main industries uh, exporting services and technologies during the, the next five years in this transportation industry sector. This uh, program, it includes 32 different measures. Uh, there is a strong, uh, strong uh, involvement on the uh, public sector, academia and companies. And one uh, measure I want to mention is uh, Business Finland Smart Mobility Program. Uh, that has 50 million euros for companies and academia. Uh, to kind of uh, do some research and innovations and also uh, internationalization activities. And here is uh, one uh, slide about those uh, ecosystem thinking. Uh, there is about 10 to 15 different kind of ecosystems in this field. They have also most of them have got some kind of uh, funding from Business Finland and they all aim to be international and most of them already have both international uh, participants in those ecosystems and most of them also have already achieved some results in exporting. Here are some promises we do uh, for our members, I'm not going to read those through each. Uh, and uh, here are our staff in uh, our office. Uh, myself, Laura Eiro, she is program director uh, in this uh, growth program. Eni Rauma, uh, he is uh, responsible for circular economy uh, issues in transportation and Sanni Remonen. Uh, she is responsible for communication and marketing and those events we are organizing our, by ourselves. That's Ideas Finland. Thank you for listening. And now thank I you. have to stop sharing. Yeah, thank you, Marco. Any questions? At this point for 
Marko or about the ideas Finland before we end the presentation of ideas factory and then the discussions. It seems like there's at this point no questions. So, Pekka, can you continue about telling us a bit about ideas factory? Uh, of course I can, and I will. I will tell you how we are related to ideas Finland and what we are doing in in in, in Finland also, but especially in Tampere. Let me share I my screen. We are kind of brothers. Uh, I think Ideas Factory is kind of our. Uh, is it small brother or something like even, that? Yes. Even yeah. Becca is older than me. They are small brothers. Yeah. I am physically old, mentally young. So uh, that's my philosophy of life, anyway. So. Uh, I'm very happy to be able to tell you about uh, ITS factory activities going on here in Tampere. Uh, when we talk about ITS factory, I think one of the key issues, perhaps the main issue is public-private partnerships and public-private networking to develop intelligent transport systems, of course. So, so let's skip this one. So briefly about intelligent transport systems in Tampere. Uh, Tampere region has been very active in, when, it, when it comes to intelligent transport system, even systems, even though we didn't know this term perhaps when we started uh, at the end of 1990s, but we started to work towards uh, intelligent transport systems anyway. We had a number of uh, quite a not too many, but num a number of active and innovative companies uh, and a lot of SMEs. And we decided to do something because we realized that um, together we are stronger and together or not only companies together, but also um, authorities and, and research institutes together. In the city of Tampere or Tampere region, we could do a lot of things if we join forces. From the beginning, we have been kind of a volunteer networking group. No, no membership fees, just uh, a lot of, uh, let's say, innovative ideas and, and will, willingness to work together. And that has been, that has been the, the kind of a main, main uh, let's say, issue when we talk about the ITS factory activities. So active cooperation with companies, authorities, research, in institutes and education institutes. Originally, we, we had a name called TRITS. We didn't invent any other name, but it was Tampere Region ITS Network. And we established uh, that kind of an unofficial organization in 2006, so 14 years ago, quite a long time. And it was, it was uh, targeted to be a local cooperation ITS forum. And uh, one of the main goals of, of TRITS was to, to establish ITS test field, some kind of a test environment where you could come and test your ITS solutions and see if they are, uh, let's say, if they are capable enough to, to be commercially viable also. So to, to let whoever wants to test, to let them test their solutions in, in Tampere. So we, we wanted to set up a kind of a innovation, experimentation and development environment. And, and that was, was also one of the key issues in, in the, the local strategies when we talk about the city of Tampere. So we wanted to be something. We wanted to provide uh, facilities for testing and, and and, and uh, all kinds of uh, evaluations and whatever you would like to have when it comes to ITS. But then we decided that um, IT Tritz Network was just a kind of a group of people talking with each other and trying to find new, new kind of ideas. 
but we wanted to be a bit more organized. And, and uh, in May 2012, we, we launched ITS Factory. We, we selected the name and we decided to, even though we are not an official organization, we decided to be a bit more organized. So we were well on the way when the Smart Tampere program was launched in autumn 2017. So from the beginning, it was very clear for ITS Factory that we need to cooperate with Smart Tampere program. So this has been one of the cornerstones. And we have realized that without the, the city of Tampere and, and the business Tampere and Smart Tampere program, we couldn't do as much as we can do with them. So that was one of the key issues. So what is ITS Factory? Of course, I told you something about the backgrounds, but, but in one, one sentence, you could say that we, we are innovation, experimentation and development environment where companies and individual developers, even, even persons, can research, develop, test, and pro productize uh, different kind of intelligent transport systems and solutions. So we wanted to provide a kind of a tool or, or a framework for all ITS stakeholders to develop, test, experiment, whatever. And there are a couple of uh, big issues behind here. Let's take the 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 first the strong political support. City of Tampere and, and all, uh, other authorities from ITS field, they have provided us with very, very much political support. And now we, we talk, talk about political support, not funding. So, so this is a volunteer basis uh, organization. We work uh, very much with, uh, with uh, national ITS, organizations, especially ITS Finland, and we have, uh, we have tried to provide our suggestions and uh, contributions to national ITS strategies also. In, in, the, in the city of Tampere, we have the city mayor program, which is uh, providing us a kind of a backbone, because we know that what is written in the mayor program, it normally means uh, that, that these things are important for the city. And of course, we have tried to provide ideas for the mayor program so that we walk hand in hand. Tampere, Tampere city strategy and, and smart Tampere development program are very important for us. And, and we have very much tried to, to bring the voice of ITS factory and its members to city strategy and smart Tampere program. And as I said, we have been part of ITS Finland since uh, since the beginning of uh, of last year, not not totally the beginning, but early last year. So we are kind of a, as as Marco said, uh, perhaps younger brother or or son of ITS Finland. But but we are we are aiming to create public private partnerships. So we have very, very strong local, regional and, and, and national administration here in Finland and providing us with, with all kinds of support that we may need. So in Finland, local, regional, national administration is working very much. I don't know if, if it's a bit different than in very many other countries. So we have very strong relationships with our national authorities. Uh, we have also research, development and education organizations like VTT, Tampere University, Tampere, well, University of Applied Sciences is nowadays part of Tampere University. Uh, so we work very closely together also with research organizations. And then of course, private companies from, from uh, the field of ITS, bigger ones, smaller ones, startups, you name it. And, and uh, one of the big issues is to organize information sharing between the stakeholders. We have so-called development forums four times a year where we have always one theme that we are going to talk about. The next one will be data sharing. What last, a couple of years ago, we have had um, integrated mobility services or drones and so on. Uh, we have a lot of themes for these uh, development forums. And, and this is a very strong networking tool, which we are using. Uh, 
as I said, we have a very strong cooperation with uh, the city of Tampere and also uh, Smart Tampere program. As a matter of fact, uh, Tampere ITS strategy and ITS factory strategies, they were prepared at the same time. They were work, working hand in hand when we proceeded. So ITS factory strategy is totally in line with the uh, with, uh, ITS Tampere strategy. So we have even this kind of a level of cooperation. And of course, then these two strategies are very closely related uh, to uh, smart uh, Tampere programs, smart mobility theme led by Jari Ikonen, who is, by the way, in, in this Zoom also. Um, and I don't know how much you talked in the morning about the smart Tampere program, but there are several themes which are, are developing different kind of issues. But of course, smart mobility and mobility as, a, as such is related to very many of these things. And of course, then we have these, uh, these vertical, vertical activities like uh, AI, uh, connectivity and safety and security. And these are also related very strongly to, to mobility. So very strong cooperation between all kinds of uh, stakeholders, not only companies, but also authorities and, 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 and then research organizations. Uh, when it comes to smart mobility uh, theme, so, so this is the, perhaps the most important for us and, and the objective of the team is to offer uh, fluent, diverse and cost efficient ways to travel and develop the world's smartest integrated transportation services, uh, which is a kind of an ambitious goal, but that's what we are aiming at. So that we can create an uh, integrated system where trunk lines are connected with local feeder services in an efficient and environmentally friendly way. In the morning you did, if you participate uh, sessions, you heard about the, uh, our climate goals and that kind of uh, uh, things and, and uh, how, do, how we want to decrease the amount of uh, pollution and, and, uh, and uh, greenhouse gas and so on. Um, the intelligent transport systems uh, have been developed and uh, organized in cooperation with cities, research institutions and private and public sector also under the smart mobility theme. So, so we are totally in line with that. And, and that's why it's easy to say that we are part of a smart mobility, let's say, ecosystem which is a kind of a very popular word nowadays. And, and as I said also, so innovation and testing platform is also in the interest of smart mobility theme. So, so we want to be a kind of a platform or place where you have an internationally recognized platform or platforms to be used by interested stakeholders. Um, and, and Mr. Ikonan is, is available for further information when it comes to this. Oops, sorry. Uh, I mentioned already about the mayor program. So the mayor program underlines that the intelligent transport systems are essential when it comes to safety, flexible and environmental friendly mobility and, and, and well, mass is one of the issues here. And also uh, demand responsive autonomous buses are targeted. Uh, in, in, uh, together with ports and city bikes, so that we could have also very, very flexible and, and effective uh, integrated feeder transport services to our new, tra uh, new tramway, which will be ready by the end of this year. Um, and and the, one of the objectives of, of the mayor program is to have autonomous feeder buses in use as an integrated part of the transport system. So this is also the target of the commission to be able to provide integrated public transport services where, where mass and autonomous transport and every, everything related to these things are integrated together seamlessly. This is uh, one of the big issues also here in Tampere and it's totally in line with the mayor program. Uh, well, autonomous feeder transport services, they have been piloted in Tampere uh, in several experiments and, and also international research and, and product development projects, uh, which are now going on. 
Um, one of them is called Show. It's to, uh, together with uh, with uh, activities uh, led by business Tampere. So we are trying to create a test environment for automated transport in in suburb of Hermanta. So this is also very important, and this is also mentioned. Uh, this objective is mentioned in, in the mayor program. So the aim of the city of Tampere is to promote low carbon energy efficient transport uh, by developing uh, different kind of mobility services and systems. Uh, and, and these will be implemented during the coming years. Uh, the objective has been to use a lot of, I mean, a lot of euros to create these uh, objectives, sorry, to reach these objectives. But of course, uh, like COVID-19, so there are things that you cannot foresee and some things have um, perhaps caused some delays, but anyway, the big picture is to, be, to reach this goal. Um, connected and automated transport is one of the, the big issues also in ITS factory. Uh, one of the reasons for, for uh, being a good place for a connected and automated transport testing and development is that Finland has a very supportive legislation for automated transport. And Tampere and Tampere city area thus offers a great environment for, for, for the devel development and testing. So we want to actively develop different parts and elements of, of automated autonomous driving like uh, feeder transport services uh, towards integrated system, but also other elements that you need when it comes to automated transport services. And, and uh, the city has an offer supporting digital and physical infra. And, and the message from the city is that if you have uh, good, uh, let's say justifications to have a physical or digital infra, that is uh, let's say based on open solutions, not any closed systems. But anyway, based on closed, closed, closed open, sorry, open interfaces and, uh, and and scalable products. So they are willing to provide these uh, physical and digital infra uh, developments if needed and justified. Uh, a temperate test environment in 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 uh, the suburb of Hervanta also includes a private 5G test network and open interfaces. So you can come to, to Hervanta and, and test all kinds of 5G enabled services and developments. And also we will have the uh, test area for automated transport, which is now under development. So it will be in, in the city of Hervanta. As a matter of fact, in, in this picture on the, on the right hand side, so you can see already, uh, Hervanta Digital Twin, which has been uh, uh, created to support these kind of a testing activities and, 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 and test environments. The big goal is to go uh, to develop automated transport services in 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 the in and vehicles for for challenging weather conditions to the next level. This is taken from our let's say our brochure or leaflet. Uh, we are very, very good in winter. I mean, we have winter and we have challenging conditions, at least this year. So, so to be able to offer a test environment where you have uh, challenging conditions has raised quite a lot of interest also, not only in Finland, but also outside Finland. So, and this is something that ITS Factory wants to, to offer. Um, so I was talking about integrated mobility services. So, so firstly, if you look at the map, you can see that Tampere city area is rapidly growing city between two big lakes, which, which means challenges for the transport network because um, all the traffic coming from the east or coming from the west will be squeezed to this narrow, narrow land area, which is something like less than two kilometers wide. So it, it, it is causing a lot of problems, for example, for public transport services. That's one of the reasons that we will have the new tram line, because it has a lot of capacity and, and will, of course, uh, help, help in, in this, uh, uh, let's say, congestive in, environment. 
Uh, and, and that's one of the reasons that Tampere is, is uh, actively developing and boosting sustainable services, mobility as a service, demand responsive transport, also payment and ticketing systems, parking as a service, e-mobility and automated transport services. And these will be all, all of course, integrated with the intelligent transit system. And, and perhaps one of the things that we, we would like to mention is that also we are uh, very strongly developing drone systems. So all these services and systems will be part of, of the integrated mobility, which will be developed in Tampere and, and we offer a possibility for those who are dealing with these issues to come to Tampere to test. So Tampere wants to be one of the leaders in, in integrated mobility service development, testing and enabling. And this is something that we want to tell to the world, not only in Finland, but also elsewhere. Uh, but to make all this happen, you need data. And, and uh, when it comes to data, so Tampere city area is a forerunner in opening all kinds of traffic data, both static and real-time data to be used by all those that want to develop services. So we can offer real-time data on buses, parking, traffic volumes, traffic lights, events, including our, our tunnel, which is the, something like two kilometers long tunnel, uh, which of course, when something happens in a tunnel, you can see the, the, the changes in the city traffic everywhere if, if the tunnel is closed for a while. So, so this kind of information, they are available in, in, in open interfaces and in standard formats. This is one of the big issues. We want to develop system solutions and we want to test them, but they have to, to use uh, uh, open interfaces and standard formats to, so that we can support these kind of activities. Of course, we can also provide information related to events which are, are, are happening, incident, accidents, whatever, so th these all are available. Um, on the right hand side, you can see that we have a Tampere city data portal, Tampere Kaupungin data portali, which offers uh, open data, but also ITS factory has kind of a developer wiki, where you can get uh, your hands to the open interfaces. Uh, related to public transport and uh, other traffic and also different kind of applications and so on. Uh, this uh, ITS factory developer wiki will be part of our new new uh, website, uh, which which has been opened just early this year at the end of last year. So I would encourage you to check our website which I'm very okay. proud of because we are doing uh, quite a lot of these developments uh, with very limited funding or without funding. So we still have been able to achieve quite a lot. So, but to make this all happen, so, so we have to have very active public-private partnerships, cooperation between members on all levels. And, and this has been done and we have had a dozens of uh, research and development projects in national and international level where ITS factory members have been part of the consortium and our goal is to produce business oriented solutions not not only to to just to have nice time but also to de to produce solutions for ITS and we want to support standardization that's one of the things that ITS factory is now very strongly trying to to develop uh, we have uh, also innovative procurement as as one of the tools that we are we are using when we we are we want to pilot and develop activities. So innovative innovative procurement processes are are very very popular here in Tampere. So in a nutshell, IDS Factory is an open research, development, testing, and data sharing network for for the members. I will open this picture of the partners a bit more afterwards i have still a couple of minutes i think but what what we are aiming now in the near future so we want to develop business driven ecosystems where businesses research and development and municipality work together perhaps even municipalities also the surrounding municipalities not only the city of tampere 
uh, we want to have regional, national, and international cooperation, and we want to link with uh, similar ecosystems nationally and also globally. And, and we want to have uh, R&D activities in, in national and international levels. So, so all those that are interested in working together with ITS factory members, so they are more than welcome to talk with us. And we want to develop advanced demonstration site and partners, and we want to develop tests and trials. So this is something that we are aiming at in the 2021 and beyond. So we want to create business from uh, ITS supported, uh, uh, sorry, uh, we want to, to develop business from, from uh, ITS uh, solutions which are supporting by, uh, by, uh, supported by our R&D activities. So R&D works hand in hand with the development and we want to create business from that. Um, and, and we want to be uh, kind of a, let's say primus inter pares, uh, the best among the, the, the best. So best of the best when it comes to, to transport systems. Uh, and we have a dynamic list of actions. So we, every, every, let's say, we have a list of actions for each year, also for this year. And, and we are, um, every two months or so, we are checking if we need something, some changes or something for, for this dynamic list of actions, but we are working flexibly. And, and of course, we want to market um, and, and, and tell about ITS factory everywhere. And, and we have the monthly newsletters and that kind of things. Unfortunately, they are in, in Finnish, but our website, then it is in English. So you can check a lot of things there. And, and uh, just briefly, because I'm, I'm gonna finish very soon. So, so what kind of uh, tools or activities we have? So we have a management team that is leading our work. Uh, we have a communication plan that we are using when we want to, to, to let's say, disseminate our results. We have web pages. Uh, we have advisory board uh, consisting of the, let's say, the most important ITS stakeholders in, in, in Finland. So they, they are following our work and providing us with guidelines. We are developing from pilots to services guide. Uh, we are promoting innovative procurement processes. We arrange development forums. Uh, we all promote open data activities and, and we want to have national and international networking together with you. And we contribute to standardization and, and as said earlier, ITS Factory is nowadays part of ITS Finland. Uh, and, and this is my last slide. So we still have some 10 minutes for discussions if needed. But as you can see, we are quite a few, something like almost 100 members. Uh, there are also international members. There are also members from outside Tampere, of course, and, and uh, there are very small ones and very big ones. But, but there are, are uh, representatives of, of, let's say, this kind of a big stakeholders and transport system uh, uh, owners, planning and consultation, information system, uh, infra providers, traffic and service and data uh, providers and, and uh, developers, and then product and component developers and research institutes. And all we work together and all we know each other. The only condition, precondition for being a member is that if you apply for a membership that you have to do, then you also have to come to one of our meetings or, or development forums to tell about yourself. So, but you don't have to pay any, any participation fee. So this is volunteer work and free of charge. So I would uh, like to you, if you are not yet a member, so I would like you to consider being a member of IDS Factory. Uh, but uh, one thing I have to underline that since ITS Factory is, uh, uh, has no fees, so it doesn't mean that you can through us to get, uh, let's say, membership of ITS Finland. That's not the case. You have to, to be an ITS Finland member, you have to apply a membership from ITS Finland and, and vice versa when you want to be an ITS Factory member, so you have to apply the membership from us.
we have different a bit different kind of uh, uh, organizations and and structures so so that's even though we uh, work together hand in hand so you have to remember this but anyway uh, we have some some a bit less than 10 minutes time so i will stop now and then you can raise questions if you have any and you can also ask uh, ask thank bye, you bye becca language. thank you becca and also marco uh, does anyone have any questions you can either use the chat window or I think you can use your own microphone too, if you have some questions. Unless, okay, Klaus Peter, go ahead. Okay, uh, fabulous meeting, and thank you very much for Pekka for uh, sharing that the city of Tampere is open for business and open to the world to visit Tampere. Um, the reason I'm on this call, I'm a volunteer on ASTM committee F45 and my close personal friends who work on the security team at Nokia Bell Lab Security have been very kind and generous in making the facilities at Nokia headquarters available for a meeting in October. So uh, the meeting's free, doesn't cost anything to attend and they're representatives from large industrial groups in the area of communications, uh, intelligent robotics. Uh, we have extended and had one participant from VTT give a meeting three years ago, uh, but apparently VTT management didn't seem to be interested in standards development at that time in terms of um, unmanned ground vehicles. So um, I'm open to coming up to Tampere to really understand uh, if there's a commitment to doing real business. And also if there's a subgroup who's, if, if your organization will also include uh, airborne platforms, because there's a lot of rapid development right now across the planet. There are about 40 platforms in testing from China, US, Japan, etc. for unmanned um, uh, airborne vehicles that are completely autonomous. So I'd like to know if this group is also open to uh, airborne platforms. They start in the ground, but they're completely automated, go up in the air, moving people short distances, several kilometers, those types of things, if you'd be open to testing for airborne platforms. Very good, thank you. Yeah, uh, would you some, say something, uh, Jukka? I can briefly say that, um, yeah, together with uh, the city of Tampere and business Tampere, we have been talking quite a lot about, uh, let's say, unmanned airborne vehicles or drones or whatever and 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 also we have a lot of uh, research and development activities in this field uh, and we have been talking with uh, several stakeholders that are involved in 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 this area so yes uh, when if somebody wants to come to talk with us about this so we're going to arrange a uh, meeting or even kind of an event where you can meet all those uh, stakeholders that are in the business, so to say, and and to talk about possibilities. And also, I think uh, it could be now I have to check if um, Mr. Rikonen is here, but it could be hosted by by Business Tampere. Perhaps Yatsi, you could say if, if this is possible. Is he on the line? If not, we can check it afterwards. But yes, this is one of the, the things that we want to develop in, in ITS Factory. Okay, and then uh, I posted the link to the ASTM committee. We have weekly meetings <clears throat> and uh, there are representatives from the National Institute for Standards and Technology there. Uh, it doesn't cost anything to participate. There's no cost or fee. Uh, we've invited various representatives from the Forum for Intelligent Machines in, uh, which I think is FEMA, which is based in Tampere. And uh, never got any feedback if they thought it was helpful. And we've had some discussions with also the gym people working on the, uh, the bus that you showed. But I understand that that's a, um, not a fully autonomous bus, but it's in the process. So we've had some discussions with the NIST ASTM F45 committee with some representatives from VTT and the Alto campus, but they don't really understand standards development and they don't understand operational implementation for that the business is happening now. 
So the context is it's wonderful. There's a test facility, but there's so many 5G, 6G facilities in Olu and at Alta University. What's the unique benefit that Tumper is offering besides just staying here at the Alto campus and using the Ericsson Nokia 5G, 6G test system that's on the Alto campus? Yeah, I think uh, perhaps you guys are chairman and being from VTT, can you say something about that? But anyway, um, I would like to underline that um, we work together with, uh, with, of course, VTT in Oulu and VTT in Espo. Uh, that's not not the problem because they have facilities all over. Uh, but but our let's say our focus in Tampere will be on 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 automated traffic, different kind of solutions and systems, and also. Uh, to be able to, to test that and, and offer an environment, so you, need, you need to have 5G. And, and uh, the, the private 5G test network has been used uh, so far, but uh, in, in the future, it will be further developed. I know that, of course, 6G is also being talked about, but perhaps um, it's not yet so, so let's say, ready for, for testing. Yeah, but anyway, you, do you want to say something about uh, from VTT side? Uh, perhaps more closer related to about the ITS factory and ITS being what possibilities we could offer as the network, because I think we have multiple companies who are also interested in this area. And, and like you mentioned, the FEMA, the Forum for Intelligent Machines, there we have this kind of a mobile work machines and, and multiple companies working in this Tampere uh, area, which are at the moment very actively developing also the uh, automated systems or, or moving towards the autonomous systems. And, and, and also the university is, is, is involved here. So we definitely need to have more discussions about the topic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, please feel free to to send us uh, all all kinds of or any kind of information, suggestions, or whatever you might have. Um, perhaps uh, from from the IT factory uh, website, you can get the at least the email addresses. Or if you don't, so so please you can get them from from the organizers of this event, smart smart city week so i think uh, we can we can continue discussions but this is very interesting thanks so i just want to say i'm a vapa echtoin in turn tech here so uh it's i'm very passionate and i love tampere as a city i love mustamakara so uh and uh, in october we we're if this COVID goes away we'll have a delegation visiting from the states and from france and japan coming here to the nokia headquarters but we'd love to come to tampere hopefully have a sauna eat some mustamakara and uh visit the uh the test range there with uh, the blessing of uh, marco forsblom and its finland so so if if you are if you are able to come here in October, so we will arrange you Mustamakkara and sauna. Of course, that's not a problem. And 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 as a matter of fact, um, ISO TC two hundred four has also plans to arrange a, a standardization committee plenary here in Tampere a week before uh, ITS World Congress in Hamburg. I'm I'm one of those who should organize this because I'm I'm. Uh, I'm now involved in a CITS uh, standardization working group. So, so well, but it always takes time and that's something that you don't have. So that's one of the reasons, uh, Marco, can you tell anything about this process of, of uh, getting somebody to closely follow our uh, standardization activities? Do you have anything to tell about it now? Uh, not about standardization, but networking and finding uh, new partners and uh, stakeholders. That's e that's easy to organize. That is, uh, standardization issues is mainly done by uh, uh, YTL uh, Kim Konkarikoski. He is maybe the best person for to contact in standardization issues, but. Uh, that is something we have to kind of uh, look carefully and uh, try to help you. 
Yeah. And, and I'm talking continuously with Kimmo Konkarikoski from YTL because they are responsible for standardization activities when it comes all kinds of standardization in Finland. So, so also this is uh, something that we have realized, well, not, not realized, we are aware that, that you have to take care of if you want to have global activities. So you cannot isolate. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there any other questions or topics to be discussed? I think we are almost uh, used our time for this roundtable discussion. But if there's no any questions, but Pekka and Marco can uh, kind of wrap up this, telling us what you see are the biggest benefits for public and private companies to cooperate in this field of ITS. Would you like to start, Pekka? Well, uh, yes, I, I can start in one sentence. Without uh, ITS factory and public-private partnerships, we perhaps could not have done so many development uh, projects and activities as we have done since we realized already in the beginning of this uh, century and this millennium that we are sometimes small companies cannot work alone but if even if they join together they still need to cooperate with the uh, research institutes and especially authorities and here in Finland that is very easy so so we have very low thresholds when we want to, to talk with uh, with uh, different kind of organizations even authorities but ITS Factory is a kind of a day, daily basis tool where you can develop ideas and some of these ideas you can even uh, develop further into, to, let's say, the commercial products. So this is a kind of a good way to proceed, at least when it comes to ITS Factory. Uh, like I said, uh, we are in Finland called both ITS Factory and ITS Finland kind of ITS family. That means that we have trustful relations with, relationship with each other. Uh, we all have quite a long career in this business. Uh, you could say that uh, we know everyone here in Finland. Uh, we have discussions with ministries, uh, all mayors, uh, all uh, CEOs in this industry. And uh, uh, we have uh, all kind of uh, uh, things you need when you uh, search for partners. And most of our, all, we try to have also fun. So, uh, we have best parties and uh, a lot of dancing and sometimes a couple of beers. We try try to enjoy and make business. And sing. Yes, I'm not so such good in that field, but Pekka is. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Let, I, I think we should stop now before Marco starts to sing. So thank you everyone for participating this uh, round table discussions and uh, I hope you get at least something out of this. So thank you and, and let's join us tomorrow on a mobility session. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye.